welcome to our worship service as we celebrate the goodness of God to us, through us, and with us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in our worship service. Uh, we're glad that you're a part of our uh, spiritual life, and we ask uh, uh, God's blessings for you and for the people uh, you love and care about. We'll start with a couple of announcements. Uh, first, uh, uh, for uh, both St. Luke's and St. John's congregations, uh, we have, we continue the Positive Transition Gatherings, Saturday, April 24th uh, at St. Luke's, 10.30 uh, start time, and then on Wednesday, April 28th at 5 p.m. start time at St. John's. Uh, we encourage you, to uh, those of you who are members of both congregations, to, uh, to attend one or both, uh, however you feel comfortable, and we will be talking about uh, uh, kind of where we are in ministry at this time. In addition to the positive transition um, meetings, uh, uh, we are uh, entering graduation time, and if there are uh, family members and members of the congregation who will be graduating from college, uh, from high school, from uh, technical school, wherever, if there's a graduation, we'd like to know. Uh, we'd like to uh, be able to uh, compile and, and recognize the graduates of uh, of the class of, of 2021. Uh, upcoming, there is a Bold Cafe dinner. Uh, uh, the information is found in your bulletin, and the Reverend Sarah Schurschlip is, uh, 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 is the featured uh, uh, guest or featured uh, speaker, and uh, the information uh, on the upcoming Bold Cafe dinner uh, is found in the bulletin. Uh, before we continue, anyone behind the scenes have any announcements or anything we should highlight? All right. Uh, with that, we begin our service with the prelude.
join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. The Lord lets me rest in green shadow, and moves me beside peaceful streams. The Lord renews my strength, and guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with Please share with one another our sign of God's peace. Peace. We sing our gathering hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the invitation to confession. If I claim that I have no fear, no guilt, no grief, or no regrets, I am stumbling around in the dark. But God is light. In God there are no shadows. If I come clean and admit that I have missed the mark, God will faithfully and justly forgive me. Amen. Please take a moment to confess your fear, ignorance, greed, or regret. Gracious God, full of grace, you continually form my body and soul together into a masterpiece. Often your goodness and mercy are hidden under the shadow of my anxieties. The world takes advantage of my weakness, but your grace and your mercy follow me, no matter how badly I feel. I praise you for your forgiveness, which strengthens me in the name of Jesus, the Shepherd of Peace, the Feast of Victory. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we are dead in sinfulness. God makes us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. This is how we have discovered love's reality. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. Because of this great love, we should be willing to lay down our lives for one another. If anyone sees a fellow believer in need and has the means to help him, yet shows no pity and closes his heart against him, how is it even possible that God's love lives in him? Beloved children, our love can't be an abstract theory we only talk about but a way of life demonstrated through our loving deeds. We know that the truth lives within us because we demonstrate love in action, which will reassure our hearts in his presence. Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience, and he knows everything there is to know about us. My delightfully loved friends, when our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God. And whatever we ask of him, we receive because we keep his command. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to him. So these are his commands that we continually place our trust in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we keep loving one another, just as he has commanded us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks to God. Heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today I would like to reflect on two passages of Scripture. The first uh, comes from our discipleship reading, 1 John chapter 3. And then uh, to attach that or combine that with a reflection on Psalm 23. 1 John chapter 3 says, in part, Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. And God knows everything there is to know about us. My delightfully loved friends, when our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God. Years ago, when my family and I lived in uh, Youngstown, uh, that was the time of my children's life when they were living, uh, they were elementary students, elementary age. And one year for Christmas, uh, they received sleds uh, as Christmas presents. And uh, these sleds uh, were, I guess, uh, kind of the older retro uh, style of sled. Uh, that had uh, the rails uh, uh, down the side, kind of like the red flyer uh, uh, sleds. It had wood, and you could uh, uh, you could turn, uh, and you sat on uh, pieces of wood, and uh, and that's uh, what my uh, children received. Uh, one of the gifts that my children received when they were uh, that year, and my children were excited about getting these sleds. Uh, the sleds that uh, they were normally used to uh, were the plastic kind that they just sat in and just zoomed down. Uh, but to have the rail sled and to be able to turn, uh, that was exciting for them. And they, they really were excited about the opportunity to, to use those uh, sleds. So one day, snowy day, uh, Beth and I went to, uh, got the kids, got them all, packed everything, packed our snow gear. Uh, put back the sleds and we went to the local sledding hill. At the bottom of this hill there was a post and to this day I still don't understand why there was a post in the middle of the pathway of the sled hill. But we gave Neil, who uh, decided he wanted to try it first, we gave Neil uh, instructions on how to turn it. We did some practice. And then when he felt confident we sent our son Neil down the hill. Now, I don't know what it is about uh, some situations, but in that situation, it just seemed like that post that was at the bottom of the hill was a magnet for my son as he was zooming down the hill. And the farther he went down the hill, the more, for whatever reason, he started to turn and head towards that post. Now, as a dad, I was horrified. I could picture in my mind exactly what was about to happen. And so I ran down the hill, yelling at Neil, turn the sled, turn the sled, turn to the right. And it didn't matter how loudly I yelled, it didn't matter how fast I ran down that hill, it just looked like Neil was heading more and more to that post. Later on, after, uh, uh, after the sledding, I asked Neil, did you hear what I said? Did you hear uh, or did you see? And he said, I was so worried about hitting the post I didn't know you were talking to me at all. I didn't know you were following after me. Psalm 23 is one of the most famous 
psalms in Scripture. It's probably one of the most famous portions of Scripture. The version that we usually remember is goes something like this, or starts out something like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Leads me to pastures and green fields. We speak in this Easter season, the 23rd Psalm every Sunday, uh, as part of our Easter recognition. And we've read it in the call out to worship. The version of, of uh, a version of Psalm 23 is how we form our call to worship this Easter season. It's a little different variation, but it's Psalm 23 nonetheless, an admission and acknowledgement that the Lord God is our shepherd. Now, most of the time, we hear this psalm uh, at funerals. It's not a psalm that we generally associate with Sunday morning or day-to-day -day life. And I think the reason that we do that is because, again, of another very famous line in the psalm. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you protect me. It's the last line of that psalm, the very last line, that says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of my days. You know, there are days when we struggle through whatever is going on in our lives. It might be pain that we're fear, feeling in our body. It might be something that we are sad or grieving over in a loss. It might be worry or anxiety over what the future may be. I think oftentimes when we are, find ourselves in struggle, it is difficult, if not impossible, to see or hear or feel God's presence. Sometimes the days are so difficult that we know that there is a God above us, but we're so focused on the difficulties that it is hard to hear God from above. And sometimes we are so focused on our anxiety or worry or our guilt that it is hard to, to hear God's voice coming to us. And sometimes the worry is so strong and the fear is so present that it is difficult to, to, to feel the presence of God within us. See, while well, oftentimes we, we put Psalm, uh, Psalm 23 in the context of death, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the writer, the composer, the singer of Psalm 23 had one of those days when he just struggled to feel God's presence inside, to hear God's voice in their ears, to see God's presence around them. The, the writer of Psalm 23 just had one of those days where he was, he was so focused on what was ahead of him that he couldn't recognize the God above him. And he was so focused on his own needs, he couldn't hear the wisdom of God speaking to him that he was so focused on his regrets, on his resentments, on his guilt, that he struggled to feel God within him. He was like my son, speeding down a hillside and realizing that he was heading towards something that would hurt him. And he was so focused on trying to figure out what to do there, he couldn't hear my voice or see me running after him. 
In today's discipleship reading, 1 John chapter 3, says, Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. And the reason that John wrote these words is because he remembered years and years ago the singer, the composer, the author of Psalm 23, who said, when you can't see Jesus above you, you can't see God in front of you, you can't feel God within you, you can't hear God, just know that mercy and goodness will follow you all the days of your life. That when you feel guilty, there is goodness and mercy following. When you feel ashamed, there is goodness and mercy following. When you feel like all is lost, there is good new, good, goodness and mercy following. In other words, in those times when we can't see God above, see God in front, feel God inside, hear God alongside us, there's God following us all our days. If we were to read Psalm 23 with our Hebrew goggles, because the original psalm was written in Hebrew, if we were to put our Hebrew goggles on, we would find that that word that is normally translated follow means in Hebrew to pursue, to chase after. And then no matter, and it is a sign uh, by the psalmist that no matter how we feel, whether God is present or not present from day to day, God is just like a father chasing after a son who's lost control of his sled, following with goodness, following with mercy, so that the conscience doesn't have to be burdened by the shame or the guilt. You know, we have experienced in many ways this feeling of being disconnected from one another during the pandemic. The psalmist says that, that God follows, God chases, pursues with goodness and mercy so that our life might be restored. And that even in the midst of crises and uncertainty, when it feels like God isn't there, when it feels like we can't hear or God isn't speaking, when it feels like we have to struggle to find or feel the Spirit of God within us, there is God chasing after us, pursuing us with goodness and mercy all the days of our lives, so that no matter what obstacles, what challenges, what struggles we face and run into, our soul and our life can be restored. So today, we are called in the scripture, challenged, that if, if you are having trouble hearing God's voice, if you are having trouble seeing God at work in the world, if you have trouble feeling God within, within you, God is still chasing and pursuing after you, pursuing you with goodness and mercy. Let the people of God say, Amen.
his steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hope-giving Shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding Shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. We especially remember friends and family, Beth, Zach, Linda, Anna, Brent, Richard, Christine, Lauren, Mary, Deanna, Laura, Michael, Jason, Cindy, Tara, Maureen, Sally, Sandy, Cindy, Catherine, Carol, Janae, Teresa, Kay, and those we name before you in our hearts and through our voices. Lord, in your mercy, Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our congregations, St. John's and St. Luke's, in our life together, and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, we pray for and lift up those in our faith family. John, Marilyn, Bob, Bertha and Jim, Barb, Jack and Donna, Gloria, Rex, Jude, Sue, Betty, David, Sue, Paul, Luann, and those we name before you through our hearts and in the, uh, through our voices. Carol. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember loved ones who have died in you. We especially remember the stay the family, friends, and community who know and love Linda Sharning House. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
want to thank you not only for joining us uh, in worship, but also uh, through the ways that you offer uh, gifts and offerings uh, to us to continue our ministry. Uh, we uh, continue uh, to uh, uh, ask for food donations, especially uh, for the month of April, uh, spaghetti and spaghetti sauce. Uh, and uh, uh, St. Uh, John's is also raising money through for their Miles for my, miles of Pennies campaign. Uh, thank you for all of your contributions, whether it is donations of money, time, or talents. And uh, we are grateful for your support. If you would like to make any uh, offering or have any questions about what we're doing uh, in our uh, neighborhoods, uh, the information is provided on the screen. With that, we sing our offering canticle, Joyful, Joyful.
to God.